Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny, if you're new, and today I invite you to join me as I transform my outdated maple cabinets into this light and airy bright white kitchen. So stay tuned to see the process of what it took to get this look. So here are the supplies that I picked up and I'm gonna go over them with you just in case you are attempting this project as well. So I have two of these Rust-Oleum cabinet transformation kits and they are in pure white. So that is the color that I'm going with for my kitchen. I just wanna brighten things up. So I got two of these because my kitchen's not huge but it's not tiny either and I didn't wanna have any trouble with not having enough paint and having to go back and try to get another one. These were the last two that I picked up at Home Depot that they had, so it made me a little bit nervous, and so I got both of them. So we'll see what happens there and how much I need. Then I also have the hardware. Since my hardware is outdated and doesn't match the rest of my house, I went ahead and picked up the darker hardware. This is in the Coco Bronze color and I just picked up contractor packs, which saves a little bit of money, so you end up saving a few dollars when you buy it in a pack like this. So I've got three of those, and then I also have these, which are for the handles for the drawers. So I went ahead and picked up some of those in the same finish. Then I have some Solo Cups, and I have labels because from what I'm understanding, it is very important to have like all of the same hinges labeled for each cabinet and you just don't wanna mix them up because then they don't fit back on there properly. So I'm gonna use Solo Cups to keep everything organized and also use them for putting my brushes in when I'm painting. I have some painter's tape, I have a drop cloth, I'll be working in my garage. And I picked up these little tripods just to help with the cabinet doors like as they were drying. And then I have two paintbrushes. And I actually went with like a higher quality paintbrush because I just thought that, you know, if you don't want brush strokes and if you want your cabinets to come out looking really nice, then you probably want to use a decent paintbrush. But you can use whatever paintbrush you want. But I just thought that spending an extra couple dollars and getting like a nicer paintbrush might help my finish to come out better. So I've got two of those just in case one started to wear out. You definitely don't want your bristles to get all bulky and worn out and frayed because that's gonna affect your finish as well. So I have two just in case. So these are the supplies that I have for this project. Okay, so I went ahead and opened up one of the kits and I just wanted to show you guys what's inside. So we have the protective top coat right here. We have two cans of the Bond coat and Home Depot actually tinted these for me. So whenever you pick your color, they'll, they'll basically tint it to whatever color you want. There's a lot of colors here on the box that you can see and you can pick any of these colors. So I just chose pure white, which is the first color. And so they went ahead and tinted these for me and then we have this Decorative glaze, which I don't think I'll be using that. That's if you wanted to add like another layer of color on top, but I don't want to do that. So then we have the deglosser, which the deglosser functions as if you were sanding the cabinets. So instead of sanding them, you just put this deglosser on and it takes the shine off the cabinets and makes the paint stick to them better. And then we have some painting sticks to stir the paint. And then they also give you a DVD so that you can um, watch that if you want to learn how to do them, which I will definitely be watching. And then it looks like some kind of towels, probably maybe something just to wipe them down. This actually looks like tack cloth, which is really great because that gets all the dust off of the cabinet so that when you paint, you don't have any debris. And then you get two of these little green sponges to scrub. I'm guessing either when you clean the cabinets or when you degloss them. So like I said, I will take you on the whole process. You're gonna see me do this from start to finish. And I will have all my supplies linked in my description box. So I started by just laying out all my solo cups and getting them labeled. And then I'm going to mark all of the doors with a number before I take them off. 
So in cup number one, I have all of the hinges and screws for door number one, and that way I don't lose track. And when I go to put back up the doors, they go in the same spot. And since I did my kitchen in two parts, I did the entire top cabinets first, put them back on, and then did the bottom cabinets. I was able to reuse the same cups that were labeled um, for the bottom half as well. So I didn't have to relabel them for the bottom half. Hey, I've been thinking about you and all the words that I'm gonna say. The next time that I see a pretty face, cause I can concentrate. So of course I couldn't film the entire process of the cabinets because even just filming little clips like this, I ended up with seven and a half hours of footage that I had to whittle down into a 30 minute video. But you will at least get to see me do each step once so that you can get a visual for it and understand what it's gonna take to do these steps. And make sure you stay tuned till the end because I will be sharing all of my tips and tricks that I learned throughout this process, things I would have done differently, things that might help you. So stay tuned for that. And if you have any questions about anything I'm doing or any supplies I'm using, please leave them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them. Make sure you clean your cabinets really well with something like Dawn dish soap, which is a good degreaser. And you're just standing when I got to this corner cabinet here, I decided not to put the door back on because it was pretty outdated. So I'm just spackling the screw holes so that I can leave it as a decor cabinet. And this is what all the cabinet doors looked like when they came off and were all washed. And now it's time to get them deglossed. And the thing to remember with the deglossing is that this is what's going to make your paint stick to the cabinets. So you want to make sure and do this step very thoroughly and make sure and wear a pair of gloves. The cabinet kit does not come with gloves, so I picked these up at the Dollar Tree. And after deglossing, you're going to want to wipe them down with a slightly wet towel, just a little bit of water. So now all of my cabinet doors have been washed and deglossed and wiped down with a wet towel. And now it's time for the bond coat. So you're going to want to get your paint stick out and give it a good stir and you're going to want to use a good quality brush. I will link the brush that I used in the description box. It worked really well and I was really happy with the finish. And before I painted each door, I wiped the door down with the tack cloth to make sure there was no dust or debris on the door. And the paint kit does come with the tack cloth, so you don't have to purchase those. It does not come with a paintbrush, however, so you will have to purchase a paintbrush. Now don't be alarmed if the first coat doesn't look good. It's okay. I don't think it's supposed to look good. This is very sticky paint so that the paint will stick to the cabinet doors and have less chipping later. So I don't think it's meant to look smooth until you get to a few coats later and then the top coat. So don't stress about that. I promise it'll look so, so pretty in the end. Just remember to always paint with the grain of the wood.
Now you'll see me degloss inside this cabinet. The only reason is because this cabinet is gonna get painted on the inside and become an accent cabinet for decor. Normally you do not have to degloss or paint the insides of your cabinets, but that's the only reason that I was doing it. My kitchen cabinets on the inside are pretty organized right now. They're not normally this organized. Usually my kitchen cabinets would be a hot mess inside, but I did just recently organize them and I can link that video at the end if you would like to take a look at that and see me declutter and clean the inside of my cabinets before painting them. I also just wanted to let you know that it did take me five coats to get a really, really good coverage on my cabinets, but I think I'm definitely the exception, not the rule, because other videos that I saw mentioned three to four coats, and so I think five is a bit excessive. The only two reasons I can think for that is, number one, I may have put my coats on very thin to begin with. And so, you know, I was really afraid of having paint drips or pools of paint anywhere. And so I was applying this very, very thinly. So I think maybe my five coats would be the equivalent of four coats. Um, the other issue is that, you know, it depends on how much coverage you want in the end and what would make you happy. I wanted really, really good coverage. Like I wanted it to look like the cabinets had almost been sprayed. And I really do think that's the effect that I ended up getting but it did take five coats to get that because you want to minimize the paint strokes you know with each coat and so you don't get rid of them completely but each coat minimizes the look of the paint strokes on there so I just think it just depends on what you're going for but I would say anywhere between three and five coats sounds like reasonable to me of how many coats you might need sometimes we're crashing down but we get up and start from the ground So as you can see, I've set up some solo cups on the floor of the garage as well so that I can paint more doors at the same time. With a two hour dry time in between and having to paint the front and the back of each door, it was just not an efficient way to work. So I needed to be able to paint more doors at the same time. So that is why I set this up this way. And here's the part where I realized that I needed to paint all of the doors on the top at the same time. And so I moved everything into the dining room and set everything up on solo cups. I realized at this point that I did not need those little tripods. I could just use the solo cups. It actually worked better, in my opinion. They were more stable. And moving it inside was able to accomplish me painting all of them at the same time and always having the overhead light ready to go to paint whether day or night and also being able to control weather factors because living in southern louisiana i was it was very humid outside it was also windy and some people had cut their grass and the grass clippings were blowing into my doors so i just realized that it was just much better i could control the variables much easier by just bringing the whole thing inside laying the tarp down over my floors and just getting to work. And if they ask us where we've been hiding, we'll just shake our heads.
so here I am on the final step which is applying the top coat and the tips I have for you for the top coat is to make sure you have a good clean brush that's in good condition and if you want to use a new brush that's fine if not just clean your other one really well and make sure it's in good condition and then apply the top coat very thinly a little goes a long way you may think you might need more top coat because that would add more protection but it actually didn't work that way for me it was like less is more and you don't want the product to pull in the corners now applying the top coat was actually a little bit stressful because I think I might have gotten a bad batch of top coat. There were these little silver flecks inside that were I think coming up from inside the can. And I even opened up the second can to make sure and it was like that in the second can as well. I even changed my shirt just to think like, is it coming off of my shirt? Because there was some kind of debris in there and you can see me picking it off. But anyway, I, it was kind of maddening to have to pick that off of all the doors while I'm trying to apply the top coat, but I managed to make my way through it. I kind of thought that was the worst thing that was gonna happen as far as applying the top coat, but I was wrong. We ended up having a termite swarm, which I live in Southern Louisiana, so it's pretty common this time of year to have a termite swarm, but they were all stuck in my top coat. So I was kind of bummed about that but it ended up that they didn't really cause any damage. I don't think they weigh enough to really mess up the top coat very much. So I got really lucky. So then the next step was just to get that hardware back in so that I can get the doors back up. I would say at this point it's probably the hardest part in the whole project is when you look at the top and it's perfect and beautiful and exactly the way you wanted it and then you look at the bottom and realize you have to start completely over and do this all over again and you just don't know if you have it in you to finish so for me I was able to push through thankfully I'm not sure how probably because of this channel and knowing that I was excited to put out the video but if you don't have that motivation at that moment it's okay and if you want to break this up and maybe take a week or two break and then do your bottom i think that would actually be really wise because it can be a bit overwhelming so break this project up however you need to it's a huge undertaking videos like this tend to make these things look easy but there's so much work that has to happen behind the scenes i spent two entire days just caulking and spackling all the wood to get the cabinets ready because there was just a lot of cracks in here this right here is a gap that existed between my cabinet and the wall and it was very very wide on top and then it narrowed down into a v and I couldn't even fill that with caulk or spackle. It was just way too big. And so I ended up breaking up paint sticks and putting them in there as shims, and that worked beautifully, and then I covered it with caulking. But there's just little things like this that are gonna take up your time. Um, all the baseboards and toe molding under the cabinets had to be spackled and painted. You know, and these are things that I didn't film because they're super boring to watch, but it's still work that needs to be accounted for. So when you go into this project, just know that there's gonna be a lot of prep work before you even get to the painting part. And I'm not saying any of this to discourage you from doing this project. I just wanna be honest with you and truthful about the work that it actually takes. But the truth is that it's a lot of work, but the other truth is, is that you can totally do this. It's very doable. I can do it, you can do it, we can accomplish this project. And it's totally worth it. I am absolutely in love with my kitchen and it was worth every single minute. So please don't be discouraged, go for it paint your kitchen but just count the cost before you start and realize that it may not cost a lot of money to do something like this but it's going to cost you a bit of time i'm gonna skip my breaks i'm gonna make mistakes i just want to feel alive it's just what i do when i'm out so try Okay, so now my kitchen is finished and I just want to go and give you guys a quick tour so that you can see a little more closely exactly how it came out. And then at the end I'm going to share some tips that I learned throughout the process and some things I may do differently if I ever did this again in case any of you are attempting this project and it might help you. So let's take a little tour.
I think this little accent cabinet might be my favorite new spot in the kitchen. I put this little sign that says Grace from Hobby Lobby and a couple of my favorite cookbooks as well as a plant and a little black wire bowl with some wooden spoons and one of the placemats actually from my dining table which kind of ties it into the dining room. So I'm super happy with how it turned out. Got a little candle there from my spring decor and I cannot wait to go and decorate this for summer as well. One thing I would recommend getting for your cabinets are these little bumpers. I got these at Home Depot. They're very, very cheap and they just protect the cabinets as they close so that you have a quiet close and it protects the paint. And here's a little close up of the hardware that I picked out as well as the drawer pulls. Now normally lighting is not really part of a painting project, but our kitchen had some really outdated fluorescent lighting. So we went ahead and replaced the light above the sink as well as the base light in the kitchen. And then we went ahead and added some of this accent lighting onto the cabinets. So these are battery operated puck lights from Home Depot and they are wonderful. And you just stick them on there with command strip style adhesive. And then they come with a nice little remote control that you can change the temperature of the lights and you can actually control whether you want them to be on a timer or not. And it's just really convenient to have. Okay, so I wanted to just give you guys a couple of tips in case you're attempting this project in the near future. And the first tip I have is to make sure you are very motivated before you start this project. You might have to watch videos like this over and over until you're ready because honestly, it just takes a lot of motivation. And there's a point where you that you get to or that I got to where I was just really tired of it and I didn't want to do any more. And it took everything I had to just get up the next morning and keep going. I thought this project would take about five to seven days. For me personally, it took two weeks and that is with my daughter Noelle helping me. So big thanks to Noelle for being my helper. She was an amazing helper. She's 14 years old and she was just like a duplicated version of me helping me. So she did such an amazing job. But no matter if you have help or not, this is a long project and this is not a project that you get instant gratification and your kitchen's white within just a few days. So it depends on the size of your kitchen. You may have a small kitchen, a medium or a big. I think mine's maybe a medium kitchen, but it did take me almost a full two weeks. So just factor that in. Don't be discouraged. It will happen. The second tip I have for you is to make sure you're painting all of the doors that you're working on at the same time because there's two hours of dry time in between coats. So if you're just doing four or five doors at a time like I did in the beginning, that is not gonna work. It would probably take you like three years to paint your kitchen. And that is how I started this project and I realized very quickly that that was not gonna work. So what I did is I divided my kitchen into top and bottom and I painted the whole top doors first and let those coats dry. I did one coat on all the top doors second coat on all the top doors and just kept going. Then I put those doors back in to give me some more room to work because they were all over my living room. And then I did the bottom half. The third tip I have is to make sure you've got some good supplies, but you don't need fancy supplies. Spending more on supplies doesn't seem to help. So I thought I needed these fancy tripods to help with the painting process to get them off the ground and solo cups actually worked better. So I would recommend just getting a ton of solo cups. You're going to be using them to prop up your cabinet doors. You're going to be using them to paint out of store hardware because we numbered all of the doors and the associated hardware so you can match them in solo cups. They're so useful for so many things. So I would just buy a lot of solo cups and I would skip the tripods. The other thing for me personally is it was better to paint indoors versus outdoors. I tried outdoors, it was very windy. I live in Southern Louisiana and it is very humid and 
the weather can be kind of rainy and wet in the air and so it just wasn't a good idea for cabinet painting if you live in a really dry cool climate that would probably be beautiful um, but for me personally living in Louisiana it didn't work out it felt too humid so I brought everything inside and I painted inside and I felt like that went a lot smoother plus I could paint no matter what time of day or night because I had electricity my last tip is kind of a weird tip, but it's just try to have fun in the process. It's not always going to be fun. Like some days are just going to be almost misery. Like you just want this to be over and you can't believe you're still doing it. And it's just frustrating and it kind of goes along with the motivation tip is that try to have fun with it. My daughter and I had some really fun moments together and we kind of used it as a bonding experience. So I think that if you can find a way to do that and make it memorable, that is a plus because otherwise your motivation starts to tank and it's hard to get through. All that being said, I love my new kitchen. I am totally happy with it. I don't regret it for one second. I don't exactly know how much it costs because I did have to go to Home Depot several times, but I know the paint kits themselves, I had to have two for the size of my kitchen. So that's $160, the Rust-Oleum paint kits. So $160 was like my base price and then adding hardware added maybe another 30 to 40. Um, and then I used the same decor that I've been having. I just kind of moved things around from my house and I put a couple of cookbooks in my cabinet and some wooden spoons that I had. And I think the only thing I bought was the little grace sign from Hobby Lobby. I think it was $7. So I didn't like redecorate my kitchen. Oh, I did buy the homemade sign from Hobby Lobby and that was $9.99. So, um, you know, it just depends on how much you're changing of your kitchen, of how much it will cost. But I mean, if you're just looking at the paint, I'm gonna guess probably around $200 to paint this kitchen. So it's definitely a money saver and I love it and I'm super satisfied with it. I'm so grateful that when I walk in here now, it feels so much bigger. It feels so much fresher and newer and more cheerful. And I love being in this kitchen. So I'm super grateful that I was able to complete this project. And again, I'm super grateful to my daughter Noelle for helping. And I hope this motivated you and I hope that it made you feel like you can accomplish this as well. And that it's, doable and that you have all the motivation you need to tackle something like this in your own kitchen. So if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for coming and I hope that you'll subscribe so you don't miss future videos. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye!